Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we're going to be talking about stationary points. So we're going to be talking about the stationary points on a curve. So let's go ahead and get started guys. So let's suppose if I have a curve like this, you know, let's suppose we have a curve. Uh, it comes here, drops and from here it kind of changes its orientation and then it goes up again. Now this, there are there are few points. Let's say this is point A. Let's say this is point B, and let's say this is point C. Now, what is point A? Point A is actually the local maximum point. Now it's not the maximum point for the whole curve. However, it's a local maximum point. Now, how I'm gonna how am I going how am I going to define that? Well, a local maximum point is a point at which the the curve is stationary. Right? It's not increasing or decreasing. And after this point, the curve starts to decrease. Right, So the function starts to decrease. So it's a point at which the curve is uh, stationary. And before that, it was increasing. After that, it starts decreasing. So that is our local maximum point. Point B is our point of inflection. Now, what do you mean by point of inflection? It means that uh, after this point, before this point, the curve was a concave function. And after this point, it becomes a convex function. Or it can be a convex function earlier. And later on, after this point, it becomes a concave function. As you can see that the curve is like this here. And after that, it becomes like this. So even if you say y is equal to x cubed, then y is equal to x cubed looks like this. Right? So this is the point of inflection. Before this, it was concave and after this, it became convex. Fine. So the, 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 the curve is going to change its orientation and uh, that is actually known as the point of inflection. Now point C over here, it's known as the local minimum point. It's again a stationary point. At, at this point, what happens is that uh, your curve is increasing before, so the, sorry, your curve is decreasing before and after that, after this point, the curve starts to increase. So this is your local minimum point. So your curve is uh, decreasing before it becomes stationary at the local minimum point and after that, it is going to increase. So I suppose you've understood the definition over here. Now let's talk in mathematical terms. What is the meaning of local maximum point, point of inflection, and local minimum point? Now uh, let's suppose if I talk about uh, you know the maximum points. What happens at the maximum points? I'm just gonna talk about the local maximum points now. Now what happens at the maximum point? So let's suppose if we have a curve like this, and you know uh, we know that this is this point A is the maximum point. Now at point A, at point A, the function is stationary, means it's neither increasing, neither decreasing, which means the derivative of the function is actually going to be equal to zero, right? The derivative of the function is going to be zero because the function is neither increasing, the neither decrease, it's not nor decreasing. That means the rate of change of the function is actually going to be equal to zero. So that's one point about the point, uh, you know, the maximum point. And another thing is that uh, we have to talk, we have to talk about the rate of change of rate of change, which is known as the double derivative, right? Which actually, which is actually known as the double derivative. Now this is actually going to be, this is going to be less than zero. Why? Because so you can either call it like f double dash x or d square y over dx square. That is the rate of change of rate of change of y with respect to x. Now wh why is this less than zero is because after this point the function starts to decrease. That means the rate of change of the function is actually decreasing as compared to this. Right. So after this point the function starts to decrease so that the double derivative of the function is actually less than zero. Fine. So I suppose you're getting my point over here, guys. So this is about the maximum point. At this, the function is stationary. F dash x is 0 and dy over dx is 0. Uh, another thing is that the double derivative of the function is actually 
less than zero here and uh, you know this is either you denote it like this or you can denote it like this now let's talk about the minimum point so let's suppose if i want to talk about the minimum point now at the minimum point what happens so let's suppose you have a function like this and this point b is the minimum point again the derivative of the function is actually going to be zero because uh, at this point the function is stationary it's not changing which means at this point the double derivative is going to be zero sorry the single derivative and the double derivative is actually going to be greater than zero because after this after this point the function starts to increase which means the rate of change of uh, the derivative with respect to x is actually going to increase so this is about the minimum point i suppose now it's actually uh, you know you know becoming easy now right now let's talk about a function uh, like let's talk about the point of inflection uh, it's a little uh, complicated here Let's suppose we have a function uh, y is equal to f of x. Okay. Now we find its derivative. We find dy over dx. It turns out to be zero, right? So that means it's a stationary point. Now, if dy over dx turns out to be zero, now we find the double derivative d square y over dx square. Now, if this also turns out to be zero, then there are few possibilities. It can either be a minimum point. It can either be a maximum point or it can either, either be a point of inflection. Now, as I told you about point of inflection, a point of inflection is the point after which the curve changes its, uh, you know, its orientation. It's a concave function, it becomes a convex function or it's a convex function, it becomes a concave function. So this is what a point of inflection is. Now it can be, it can be a point of inflection. It can be a minimum point, it can be a maximum point, it can be a point of inflection. Now, if let's say the triple derivative of the function is not equal to zero, then it is a point of inflection. Okay. Now, let's suppose if I just show you a function here. Let's suppose the function is like this. Right? It's, it's a long road ahead, right? So, uh, or let's say, yeah, or let's say the function is like this. This is a long road ahead. So, if you find uh, you find dy over dx at this point and even d square y over dx square at this point, this is zero. But here it's a maximum point. But if you find the, the triple derivative of the function and that is not zero because at this point, if you even find the triple derivative, it's going to turn out to be zero and it's going to be a maximum point, right? But if the triple derivative does not come out to be zero, that means it is a point of inflection. So I suppose you're getting this point over here. Let me just uh, you know draw a graph over here. So let's suppose we have a function. Let's suppose the function is f of x. Right? Now if the derivative of that function is equal to 0, that means that it is a stationary point. Right? So that means that it is a stationary point. Now there are three things ar arising out of it. The double derivative greater than 0 the double derivative less than zero and the double derivative equal to zero. If the double derivative is greater than zero, that means it is a minimum point. If the double derivative is less than zero, that means it is a maximum point. And if the double derivative is equal to zero, it can be a minimum slash maximum. It could be anything or it could be a point of inflection. Right. So if the triple derivative, which is this, is equal to zero, then it could be a minimum or maximum. If the triple derivative is not equal to zero, then it is a point of inflection. Fine. So suppose you're getting this point over here, guys. Uh, let's 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 talk about a function. Let's suppose we have a function y is equal to 2x cubed plus. Uh, sorry. Let's. Do it again. Let's say y is equal to 2x cubed minus 15x square uh, plus 24x plus 16. And we have to find all the points of, uh, you know, all the stationary points. So let's go ahead and find that. So first what we'll do is we'll find the single derivative of the function. That is this. So this is 2x cubed is actually going to be 3 times 2, 6x square minus 15 times 2, 30x 
uh, plus 24 right now what we're going to do is we're going to equate so the step one was step one was find uh, dy over dx so we found dy over dx step two so let's talk let's do the step two in a different color right so let's find step two so step two would be to equate dy over dx equal to zero so step two would be to equate this equal to zero so it's going to be 6x squared minus 30x plus 24 is equal to zero so step two equate dy over dx equal to zero so if we find dy over dx equals to zero uh, what we can do is we can eliminate the 6 completely x square minus 5x plus 4 times 6 is equal to 0 from here we can have uh, x we can just break it 4 times 1 x square minus 4x minus x plus 4 is 0 so this is actually going to turn out to be x into x minus 4 minus 1 into x minus 4 which is going to be equal to x minus 4 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. So from here we will have uh, x to be equal to either 4 or x to be equal to either 1 because either x minus 1 will be 0 or x minus 4 will be 0. So we'll have either x to be equal to 4 or x to be equal to 1. Now what do you do? Now we will try to find out, just going to change the pen color. I'm going to go back to white again. Now, I'm going to find out uh, what are these points. Are these points maximum points or are these points the minimum points, right? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the double derivative. So, I'm going to find d square y over dx square. So, I'm going to derivate this function here now. So, that is going to be 12x minus 30, right? So, now step 3 is actually to find the double derivative of the function now what about step four step four would be to find out to actually substitute these values to find out uh, when, what are these points are these maximum points or are these maximum minimum points so at x equals to four the double derivative so i'm just going to call double derivative at, like this so double derivative is actually equal to 12 times 4 uh, is equal to 12 times 4 minus 30 which is equal to uh, 12 times 4 is 48 minus 30 which is actually going to be 18 so since the double derivative is greater than 0 here since the double derivative is greater than 0 here which means this is going to be a minimum point fine and another thing is at x equals to 1 what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the double derivative which is the double derivative of 1 which is going to be 12 minus 30, which is minus 18. So since the double derivative is less than 0, this is going to be the maximum point. Right? So that means the function, the function at x equals to 4, the function at x equal to 4 is going to give me a minimum point. Because, why? Because the double derivative of the function is greater than 0 there. So you can see the double derivative of the function is greater than 0 here. And at x equals to 1, it's going to be a maximum point because the double derivative is actually less than 0. Now what you're going to do is you're going to find the corresponding y values as well because we need the complete point, right? So at x equals to 1, so you have the function value to be equal to, change the color. So the function value was, f of x was 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 24x plus 6. So when x is 4 and when x is 1, so you will find the values of x. So you're just going to substitute x equals to 4 there. So you have 2 times 4 cubed minus 15 4 squared plus 24 times 4 plus 6. So if you just go ahead and calculate that, uh, this is actually going to be equal to 17. Sorry. Uh, sorry, not 17, 464 into this. This is going to be negative 10. And uh, if you substitute x equals to 2, so it's going to be 2 minus 15 plus 24 plus 6, 30, 30, 32. This is actually going to be equal to 17. So the points are 4, comma, minus 10. And this is 1, comma, 17. This is the minimum point And this is the maximum point. So we don't have any point of inflection for this function. We just have, uh, you know, a maximum point and a minimum point because we just got two values for the function. 
uh, and uh, the double derivative turned out to be either positive or negative. Fine. So I suppose you're getting this point over here, guys, and you're understanding what we have done. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this video, right? And uh, just just to let you know, this is our website that is perfect-course.com. Don't forget to explore that. So don't forget to give us your valuable like on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and send us your valuable feedback. Right, so in the future videos, we're going to be talking more about the applications of uh, differential equations. Right, so thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.